to today's webinar. Today we are presenting webinar on communication, a ticket to your success, which has been, has been organized by Applied Science and Humanities Department of Parul Polytechnic Institute, Padul University. The main agenda of this webinar is to learn and gain knowledge about structured communication, which is the ticket to success if we pay attention and learn to do it effectively. I, Vaishali Nathwani, would like to introduce today's guest speaker, a human resources specialist and an international expert from UAE, Ruhina Kabir. She has completed her, her master's in business administration in 2002 and has cleared the CIPT level 7 advanced certificate HRM course from UK in 2021. She has functioned as lead recruiter for bulk hiring recruitment drives, completed the hiring process end to end, resulting in over 70% attendee on the spot offers for direct sales. She was successful in substantial reduction in the average time to fill for ENBD sales positions from over 100 days to 45 days by thorough due diligence and workflow she is actively functioning as an active volunteer for ENBD exchanger and CSR programs, continues to participate in various corporate social responsibility activities. She is also a passionate writer, penned articles on LinkedIn about personal development and motivation. Besides being passionate for con continual learning, she is also adventurous and courageous. It's a privilege to welcome you, ma'am. Hello, Ruina, ma'am. No, ma'am. Ah, I'm sorry. Good morning, everyone. Sorry, I was on mute. Yes. Uh, the morning. first expression that comes uh, that comes in my mind is "Wow." You know, the demographics of Parul University just left me in awe. An institution with 50 plus diverse nationalities, 28,000 plus full-time students, campuses spread across 29 states in the country, and a huge batch of international students means big to me. And on that note, I thank you wholeheartedly for having me here. And um, I remember not long ago, while I was working on a project of bulk hiring, I was making almost 100 to 150 calls per day, spending at least four to five minutes per call. Like to make it sound simple, I was on the phone approximately four to five hours talking to candidates, nationalities with different accents, varying language skills. And you know, one fine day I got a note from my senior manager giving me a serious feedback on the way I was interacting with the prospect hires. In short, I was given a warning that it has been observed by my peers who are sitting around me that I was heard speaking inappropriately with the candidates. Without getting more in details uh, into what and how it all happened, let me tell you what I suggested to my manager. I said, I want to go for a training. And uh, she was like, what training? I said, how to improve my communication skills? Well, I was never sent on that, and I don't know why. But this story ends here, but hold on to this. I'll go to the next one. While I was at work, I got an internal call, and the lady on the other side introduced herself as a PA, personal assistant to some executive of our company. I responded with usual greetings, and she said, uh, Ruhina, <clears throat> I know Mr. XYZ is being considered for so-and-so position, he happens to be my son, and I want to a salary recommended for him. I said, Miss ABC, <clears throat> I've already dropped an email to Mr. XYZ, who is the candidate himself, and I'm awaiting his reply. And for sure, all the details of the job offer will be shared with him. But this lady persisted, and she said, I'm his mom, and I've been in this company for so long, so please tell me the details. I stayed firm and I told her, well, this is out of scope of my responsibilities. So um, kindly request your son to connect with me and we can proceed further. Well, the call ended. And guess what? A week later, 
my manager called me in her office telling me there's an escalation of uh, from one of my stakeholders complaining about my response to her request and fast forward i was made to apologize to that person in per, uh, to that lady in person and this story ends here as well so despite all my performances and deliverables as a recruiter i never got promotion or appreciation on that job and if you are wondering why am i sharing my not so successful stories with you all the purpose to tell you is that in my career i have experienced some strange situations where i felt that had my communication skills been better i would have never landed in such a situation and having said so all of you who are listening to me right now i know you are here not only to learn how to improve your communication skills but mainly because you all want to be successful as we all know that communication is the ticket to your success so today in this short session i will take you through some vital tips on how to build your communication so it can pave way for your success so, so uh by virtue of this platform i'm sure not only the students of parul university uh, but anybody uh, who's be hopefully uh, viewing us and uh, listening to us later here um i would like to send a message see whatever career you opt for yourself whether it is engineering medical arts politics sports aerospace you need to communicate and unless you don't communicate well you will not find yourself doing good anywhere let me put it this way let me ask you one question um i don't know how many of you who have started their job search or i'm sure you must have heard this story from your friends that you know you apply for a certain job okay and um you feel that you are f for this job particular job right you apply as per the job description or the requirements of the job mentioned in the job advertisement and you present your resume you go for the interview but unfortunately you don't get through and that is the biggest frustration for every job seeker i'm sure most of you and myself i have been in your uh, in that phase uh, i know how it feels that you know you feel how come you know i i i'm fit for this job i have uh, i've made the requirement i have done so and so qualification whatever is mentioned in the job advertisement i have xyz experience i have uh, command over so and so skills but how come i gave you know i went for the interview but they never selected me why is that so how come they selected some other person who is not fit for this role uh, you know this kind of frustration comes in your in your heart but i'll tell you why because there's a there's a um, there's a research or you can say there's a survey done amongst the recruitment industry and it has been found that amongst the pool of of candidates who apply for a certain job no matter how much good your profile is how much close your uh, experience your uh, skill set is your competencies are the day you perform on the interview how you how you how you how you present yourself to the interviewer that basically you know wins your day that basically makes you uh, that basically gets you hired in simple words but today of course we are not talking about how to uh, present yourself on the interview or how to give an interview but what my point was here was that we are talking about communication unless your communication is extraordinary until and unless you don't excel in your communication skills and you don't stand out amongst the pool of candidates you will never be able to you know achieve your goals or you will never be able to excel in your field wherever you are so let's get back i will be sharing with you a screen okay and i hope that we are able to um i will take you through certain way and 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 the, you know all these things that i've shared with you all my bits and bits uh, you know stories tiny bits of stories only because i learned the hard way there and i want you all to grab this opportunity of time and resources 
so that we can you can pave way for your success let me uh, share the screen with you all and uh, himal just confirm to me once you are able to uh, view the screen Are you guys able to uh, view the screen, please? Yes, ma'am. All right. Fine. Thank you. All right. So we are here to understand communication ticket to your success. How to go about it? All right. See, the first thing is that communication. What is the term communication? Right. Basically, communication is all about connection, building connection. If you are good in, if you are effective in your communication, that will build connection. Until unless you don't build connection with the other person, you will not be understood. You will never be able to put your message across. So basically, communication is building connection. Connection builds rapport. Rapport is basically relationship building. You see, whether you are in and at any point in in your life, in your daily routine. when whether you are speaking you know when you whether you are in your university while you are studying while you are presenting in your um, in your school in your college or whether you are going for a job search presenting yourself on the interview day or you are presenting as a as a boss or you are giving some business presentations or even for that matter let's be honest in our daily life in our personal relationships when we are talking to our friends whether when we are talking to our family members we need to have that connect connection and then have that relationship building until unless you don't have that re relationship that rapport you will never be able to uh make an impact with whatever whatever you are saying so basically communication is effect effective communication builds connection connection builds rapport rapport triggers rapport triggers impact and when you make an impact that's when it results in success and when i told you that as a job seeker the biggest frustration is that amongst the pool of candidates why aren't you able to you know uh, you know hit the nail why didn't you succeed the only result uh, the only reason that i figured out out of my own experiences that we are unable to make an impact from our communication well let's move forward communication okay whenever we talk about communication most of the times in fact majorly uh it is uh, it uh, you know speaking skills comes under the category of communication people usually relate communication to your speaking power but let me tell you the secret the secret of a good communicator is of four components reading listening writing and speaking it's not only about speaking i'll tell you what, and if you are wondering how because you see um whenever we talk about whenever we talk about a good communicator we we think about good public speakers which is fair enough definitely in order to be a good public speaker in order to present yourself in order as i as i have been explaining you need to have a good speaking power but at the same time there's a background work that need, that needs to be done before you open your mouth right so this is how that is what i will be talking about how come reading writing listening and then speaking will make you a good communicator well first is reading now why do i emphasize on reading first of all because reading helps you in building your vocabulary you see man i have come across so many people who i don't know why they escape from reading habits but let me tell you very honestly reading even if you are an introvert even if you like if you spend few minutes reading anything that come across like reading your textbooks reading your reading newspapers reading anything any magazines sports magazine fashion magazines anything it builds vocabulary okay so reading basically helps you in building your learning new words you come across different different um you know uh, grammar grammatical tones that can be used in different context okay it helps you to build to structure your sentences and most importantly who is the first person when you are reading whenever you are reading whether you are at home in your personal space whether you are reading uh, in your classroom in a in a business uh, presentation wherever whenever you start reading 
a book or a magazine, anything, who is the first person to hear you out? It's you. You hear yourself. So try to read a little bit, even like make it a habit that when you are reading, try to read a bit aloud. And that doesn't mean that you raise your tone to that extent that it just bothers the rest of the team members or people around you, but start reading aloud to audible enough to hear you, yourself out so that you can listen to your own pronunciation. Okay, then reading helps you to style, uh, to, to build, the, to understand different styles of messages. Okay, if you are narrating a story, if you are you know, if you are delivering a message or a news, you know, there are different style of messages. So you need to equip yourself with all these styles. Okay. And most importantly, it builds confidence. See, I have started uh, the communication, you know, this session with the, with the topic of reading. Why? Because people often underestimate the power of reading. I have been reading, you know, since like, I don't recall maybe from the age of three, four, you know, I've been reading. I mean, I have developed that habit of reading to that extent that I start my day. Trust me, when I'm starting my day, when I wake up early in the morning, after my uh, prayers and all that, I start reading anything, whether it's, a, you know, these days we are all, um, we have all these e-articles, we have our mobile phone, smartphone, everything is there. You open up your LinkedIn platform, you open your e-books, you open anything, Facebook, articles, anywhere you start reading. I will give you a challenge today. If you spend 10 to 15 minutes reading every day, any, any subject of your choice, pick up a magazine, sports magazine, fashion magazine, reading newspaper, or even for that matter, any subject which you like out of your academics, any subject you like, pick up a textbook and start reading half a page. Not from the context that you are trying to uh, uh, learn the subject, but just just to read. Do it for the next 10 years and you will see. You will start using awesome vocabulary in, you know, you will learn such awesome vocabulary and it will really improve your communication. And, and mind you, it is 25% of your communication skills, right? Let's go to the next one, which is listening. Now, uh, in my entire career, and I'm sure you guys will second on that. I have never attended or even heard of any training where this, you know, where they teach you how to improve your listening skills. And I'm sure by now, most of us will be able to resonate and understand this, that listening is the one of the key components of communication. Unfortunately, again, it is misunderstood that listening is not communication. Listening is only just, you know, listening out and hearing other people. No, listening helps, you know, what is what are the benefits of listening? It help make, make others feel acknowledged. You know, again, if you remember, what is communication? Connection, building rapport, okay? So when the other, when you are listening to the other person, you, the other person feel acknowledged. Okay, if they feel that, okay, you know, you are, you are subconsciously building that rapport, that interaction, that connection, then it deepens your understanding, you know, until unless you don't know what the other person is talking about, what his or her query is, question is, like, for example, if you are, if you don't pay attention to your lecturer, your professor, for example, how will you be able to answer him or her? How will you be able to understand your subject? If you are in an interview session, if you don't listen to the uh, interviewer's question properly, you will not be able to gauge the right answer you have to give. Then you have then that then it builds empathy. Again, listening a very good component, a very strong component of building connection. You see, there are I think. This listening has been uh, addressed in different, um, you know, on, on, under different segments of mental health and emotional health and, you know, uh, relationship building. But again, it is a key. It is the key component of communication. It builds it, it builds that empathy. You understand what the other person wants to know. You you put yourself in their shoes, and that's where the you know your heart comes into play. You have to listen from your heart, not from your head. 
And why am I saying this? Because the last and the most foremost benefit of listening is while you listen, you are able to understand and structure your own context and your own message. You are able to figure out what exactly your speech would be uh, um, you, you would be comprised of. Okay, so fifth, the rest of the turn, the next twenty five percent, twenty five percent was listening. Now the next twenty five percent is sorry, the first twenty five percent was speaking, and the next twenty five percent was that makes fifty percent of your communication is listening. Okay, let's now move on to the next one, which is writing. Now, writing again. I mean, I am uh, as as uh, as already uh, Shali has already introduced. Part of my introduction was that I'm a I'm a content writer. Okay, I love writing. I have been, you know, I'm I'm a blogger on LinkedIn. I have an I have an Instagram where I blog, and not only that, I've been write I've been writing since my school days. And trust me, when I read my old work, where whatever I've written way years back. Or you know, uh, or even few years ago, or a few months ago, every time I feel that you know I have to improve. So writing is not something that that will um, that will um, that is something that is that that's a qualification. Writing is a skill. All right. So you know, there's one of my friend who comes to me and tell me, uh, Ruhina, you know, I you know I don't know how you write. Um, whenever you know I start writing, or whenever I pick up a pen and I start to type. i go blank i don't know you know i you know i and whatever i write it doesn't make sense to me so you know she says to me that you know i've stopped writing altogether and you know what my response to her is and mind you she's my very good friend i tell her that um what if i tell you you know what if i tell you the same thing about your speech will you stop talking altogether <laughs> and she said no of course not so i made the point i said to that's the point see if you are if whatever you speak if your audience doesn't find it doesn't mean that you stop talking you will continue to talk but you will improve something and if you feel that you are not making sense that doesn't mean that you will stop writing you will improve your writing now the question is how to improve your writing skills see first of all before we talk about how to improve let's talk about the benefits of writing writing is basically capturing ideas you know i keep a notebook a post it notebook you know all the time in my handbag wherever i go here and there and it doesn't mean that uh, you know you take out your notebook at odd times but what my point is that whenever there is an idea coming to you if you if you have some some idea in one point in two points three words four words five words just jot it down so writing basically helps you capture the ideas it helps you to construct sentences you see i know those of you or some of us most of us whomever feels that you know they 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 are apprehensive or they feel overwhelmed by when they start writing because they go blank it's a natural feeling even after so many years of my writing whatever i have been writing so far even right now today when if i start if i try to uh, start writing on a topic for a few moments i am blank i am just like any 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 amateur any anybody who's who's new to it so it happens but you have to be you have to be patient and give yourself time okay so writing basically helps you to capture ideas it constructs your sentences then improve your vocabulary it enhances visualization you know writing is something that when you are writing you start visualizing things okay that gives you a great you know that that helps you to uh, express your message more then you have to build your content so i'll give you i'll give you a challenge there all of you are listening to me right now i will suggest i will strongly urge that every day or make at least once a week twice a week twice a week whatever you feel feasible start writing half a page one paragraph two paras in whatever you want to write like you write you you read a story you read an article you read a news you read a blog and you try to put it in your own words okay and just 
don't 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 be don't be afraid or don't feel shy or don't feel disheartened that oh my god what have i written you know it doesn't make sense no problem but as 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 you go as you continue writing and you and seek help from somebody maybe your teacher maybe your friend somebody who is you know who's who can read it out for you who can read it for you then you will you will understand your own mistakes you will try to improve your own mistakes and you will improve gradually but don't don't stop writing there i will strongly urge that right because then it lists uh, uh, the what you call writing listening and reading that makes around 75% of your communication if you don't read if you don't write if you don't listen then 75% of your communication skills are empty right you will not be able to manage that and i'm sure this is the last one that everybody most of us will be waiting to hear us uh speaking you see speaking have different dynamics okay speaking needs practice you have to practice whether you are attending if you you are preparing yourself for an interview again like today i had practiced i had tried my best that i practice as much as i can before i start this this the session okay you need to practice you have to prepare yourself and i am not saying that you start speaking in front of the mirror because i have never done so but what my uh, suggestion or advice would be practicing means that whatever you have written whatever you have prepared yourself try to speak it out to your friend to somebody in front of you that will give you a feeling that yes that it's a live session and you will be able to you know manage your expressions and everything then most importantly focus on the audience shift your focus from me to them you know what happens is while you when you start speaking if you are thinking about mainly about yourself how do i look what will be people thinking about me how do i sound what is your nervousness but when you start thinking about your audience what's in it for them what do they want okay whether in and when i'm saying speech that doesn't mean that it has always has to be a public um you know presentation or anything even for that matter when you are talking to your friend when when you are talking to your teacher whether you are talking to anybody you know as as a confidant anyone you have to you have to just focus on the fact that whether your content whether your message whether your ideas whether your advice really may part of you or not whether it is really helping the other person or not so you have to you know because that will bring in sincerity in your speech and most importantly it will reduce your nervousness okay that uh, you know that nervousness fear uh, feeling that fear of speaking or feeling that will go down drastically when you will shift your focus then share stories remember how i started how i started today's session see as i told you again i'll re reiterate communication is about building connection and connection is about rapport how to build rapport when you have that you when you you know communication is all about having that emotional connect all right remember how i started i shared couple of stories about my 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 career my my experiences why because it it builds an impact it it really resonates with the other person it helps the other person to visualize and it helps the other person to step into your zone all right so try to prepare yourself by sharing meaningful stories try to narrate something that will that will help the other person understand your message okay let it be uh, like uh, transform your your content from essay to this narrative okay it should be a story that will help the other person connect with you better then check mannerisms see right now perhaps my slide is right in front of you but or maybe we are having this virtual connect again i will give you an example of your uh, giving interviews or uh, presentations during your you know your academic presentations your business presentations wherever you go your mannerisms are very important and by mannerisms i mean your gestures 
your eye contact, your body movement, everything is making an impact while you are speaking. It's not only about how, you know, how, uh, what is, how you are speaking or your voice and everything. It is about how you connect with the other person with your, with your physical presence. All right. So try to try to uh, align your hand movement with what you speak and don't overdo it, of course, obviously, because there's a, you know, the, uh, you, there's a way to uh, engage your audience or engage the listener with you. OK, try to keep your eye contact in such a way that it, the other person feels that whatever you are speaking, you are speaking from your heart. OK, your gestures. You have to um, you have to use meaningful gestures. You have to align your hand movement. Try to use imaginary props. For example, describing something. You know, if you are let's suppose describing something, maybe you, you don't have that object in hand with you, but try to use your physical um, mannerism in such a way that the other person feels, connects, and visualize what you are saying. And then, second last is intelligent pauses. You see. Uh, sometimes a good com or you, know, you can say a good communication may be considered somebody who can go on and on and on and on without you know a break no i don't consider and i'm sure everybody of each one of you who is listening right now good communication is not something that you go on and on and on and the other person you know is is not able to keep up the pace i'm sure all of you all the students who are listening to me today when your professor speaks in the in the in your class when he starts he or she starts you know giving you lectures i'm sure the boring the most boring lectures are those given by the by the lecturer who who doesn't let you ponder or reflect on what he has just spoken about he just starts from you know from this you know he just starts and ends till the bell rings for the class ends right so it doesn't happen like that you have to incorporate intelligent pauses and by pauses i don't mean abrupt pauses or uh, you know uh, strange silences but something that can you know you can uh, you can you can um, let the other person uh, you know come close to you when you pause in that moment listen to you more you are silent you give a pause so that it draws attention towards you okay so Pauses are very important. And this is the last one, which is my favorite, which is fillers. <laughs> mm, um, all these, you know, uh, sounds that we make. Okay. I don't know uh, how many of you have noticed how the, you know, the frequency of fillers that I've used today in my, in my conversation today. I will be, <laughs> I will be listening to the recording to figure out, but you see, Fillers cannot be avoided altogether, obviously, but there, there are some natural fillers, which is fine, but there are some fillers that are unnecessary or that can be avoided. Why? Because fillers are basically an indication that you are nervous, you are intimidated, or maybe you don't have the, you know, you are lacking knowledge of the content, whatever you are speaking. So how to mitigate this problem of fillers? Again, bring in intelligent pauses in between, okay? And, or if you're giving an interview, if you're giving a presentation and you feel that you, you are, you are, you know, you are running short of words or maybe you are running, uh, you, you are, you are kind of stuck somewhere. Fair enough. No issues. Everybody feels like that. I myself included, but then try to train yourself that instead of um, uh, try to pause, try to say, okay, let me think. And just give that facial expression on your face. Right now you cannot see me, but I'm just uh, explaining to you um, that, you know, you can give a facial expression and pause so that the other person can observe your expressions rather than taking making that sound of um and oz okay so uh i will just try to wrap it up by saying that you're speaking writing listening reading this all come you know uh, comprise and this all uh, combines together to make the hundred percent of your communication and 
communication is a learnable skill okay it is it is not something that you you it is something that that goes on and on for the rest of your life so the first step to the, uh, the ladder the first step to your ladder is to start practicing and reading and writing and listening and then you know speaking as well you have to practice you have to build cons bring in consistency and commitment to which will lead to your crisp communication there okay so um, i will just uh, i mean I, i on that note i will just uh, uh, i will just uh, what do you call I request all of you that just don't uh, uh, confine yourself that okay my my communication skills is only because i cannot speak i need to build my uh, speaking power no communication before you start speaking you have to develop reading writing and listening skills and then come to the speaking part and uh, all those challenges that i have shared with you uh, of uh, reading at least uh, you know for investing your 10 to 15 minutes of time for reading every day writing at least few lines half a page at least once a week twice a week twice a week listening to your friends start from your friend today after this session try to talk to your friend whenever you are you are talking to your friend whenever he or she is narrating some experience some story try to listen from your heart and then respond you will see the difference and again before you start speaking whenever you have a whenever you have to give some presentation try to prepare yourself and use your gestures remember shift your focus shift your focus from me to them okay and bring in intelligent pauses and all so i hope uh, whatever i try to uh, you know uh, compile in this short session of communication ticket to your success would help you to pave way for uh, for your uh, excellence in communication and uh, let me know in case if you have any questions anybody who wants to throw the questions right now or they want to connect with me any time to uh, you know to to learn more about the uh, you know speaking techniques or communication techniques i am very much available uh, thank you so much from my end and i am open for questions Yes. Thank you so much, ma'am, for guiding our students for communication. It will sure help help us out. Thank you so much, dear. Ma'am, what you will advise uh, the new students that we uh, that have taken admission in the first year, right? So mm -hmm. uh, they are also Gujarati medium students uh, because we are staying in Gujarat. So, right. uh, what will be your advice for? Uh, uh, I mean, sir, teaching them uh, in the communication in a better way. Okay. See, language barrier will always be there. There. See, uh, English. Of course, if I talk about myself, it's not my mother tongue. Most importantly, right? Not only English. Any language which is not your mother tongue or which is not something that you have command over. language is a skill which you have to build in there if for example for any in your situation where the uh, students are coming from a different background from a gujarati background and their uh, their the, the the communication has to build in in english language for example of course in english is a universal language right we have to use in your academics in your you know corporate uh, professional life and all that you have to again as i told you reading reading is the first step there you cannot jump to speaking if you don't read i when i started you know if you remember i'll give you a very very small simple example when a child is born and when as a toddler as a toddler when the first when the child is around 3 4 5 years old or maybe you know you see those a b c d books okay those picture books that we get and then as the child grows he is giving those building blocks those alphabet blocks and you know those word blocks number cards or word cards why is that so because the first thing that which is registered in the child's mind is when he looks into the visual of those letters he is able he tries to look into them and try to register see we are no different than a child if for example today i want to learn a new language i need to look into i have to i if if, if i for example if i want to learn a french language a french okay so if if i i start going to a teacher who is a french teacher and she or he starts talking to me in french how will i learn do you think it's a very less probability dear i will start learning the language only when i start 
reading it. Reading, tell your colleagues, your peers, your students that first of all, as and I'm sure those of you who will be all of them who will be listening to our presentation, our session later on again, please help them to establish their reading habits. All those first year students I'm talking about, OK, the news uh, people who are coming in who want to improve reading, then writing, reading and writing is essentials of a good communicator. Once you read and write, you will be able to speak because you see, as I told you, reading helps you to build your vocabulary. It, you know, it increases your vocabulary. You understand, OK, how this is, uh, you know, how different words can be used and then writing. Writing actually is a combination of reading, speaking, and uh, writing itself. Why? Because, and listening itself. When you write, you read. When you start, you write, you read as well, right? And then when you write, you listen, when you read, you, you listen to yourself. And then of course, it, 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 the writing skills itself. So this is a combination. You cannot become a good communicator if you don't have these four components there. Speaking, no doubt, is the definitely is an essential. But at the same time, before speaking stage comes, you have to read, write, listen. Listening, why? Listening also helps. Try tell your students to listen to English channels like BBC BBC News. It's very essential. At, in my childhood, my mother used to tell me, listen to BBC uh, News channel. Obviously, in those days, we never had those internet and smartphones and all these things youtube and all that so all these uh, will really help uh, and then of course consistency it is not an overnight thing it has to be done in a structured and consistent manner dear yes so first step is uh, reading and then right. Uh, writing speech, right right so that would help even for our small kids <laughs> yes for sure for sure and He said, then done. But start talking to your friends, start talking to your teacher. You will make mistakes. There will be humongous mistakes. I yes. still make mistakes, dear. I still make mistakes. Yep. I am still, obviously, it's because, as I told you, my biggest mm -hmm. belief is that communication is a skill. And skill is something, any skill is not something that you end at. You, any skill, any any technical skill, any skill, any it continues. Today, whatever level of communication I am at, my target is to go up above late, you know, in the future. Once I reach that state, I will want to go up above. So it's it's not it's, it, it will continue forever. So. Yes, it is a continuous process, ma'am. There is no end to this situation yet. Correct. <laughs> Anything yes. else? And, uh, Any? Yeah. Anything else? Yes. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, is it necessary that English will help us uh, to prove that yes, uh, she or he is a known person or a well-educated person? So, is English a better language to communicate? See, uh, to be honest with you, um, their English language is a universal language. That is something that we don't, it's beyond our control. We have not set that uh, criteria or you know, that standards in the market. It is there. We have to live with it. So uh, I, I am not saying that, okay, if, if somebody who doesn't understand or speak or doesn't have that language skills in his language is, has any, is any lesser competent than anybody else, I am not one of those people. But my only concern is that you see, since English language is a is a universal language, where you would need this language in the corporate sector, in the professional life, in whichever field of you know you go into, wherever you go, whether you are in your showbiz, in politics, in sports, you see sports. I'm sure in our part of the world, you have seen like. There are great sportsmen in our country, right? But at the same time, they will have to speak at an international level. And if they are not able to speak, you see, I'll give, I'll come, I'll, I'll, I'll again share a very small story. So I heard in one of the TED talks that uh, there was um, the, one of the recruiter was given this uh, for an, a high executive recruiter. He was given an um, a, a task. Uh, to uh, to look for a uh, for a profile or for a candidate for a you know a good uh, senior to senior to executive level position of id uh, function was supposed to be filled in so he was given this task to look for different candidates and all that 
so he pulled up uh, from you know he, he looked for he looked for the right candidates in the market and he went for the executive search and he had hunted few of them i mean three maximum two or three of them and uh, when he presented those uh, candidates uh, to the um, to the uh, hiring manager or who are the whoever the employer was the employer did not select any three of them any none of them okay so uh, the recruiter was really uh, surprised like why i picked up the you know the cream from the market and uh, they are so good and so and so they are they are fit for the profile they know this and that but again as i explained earlier in the beginning of our session the employer said ki listen i was i met all three of them each one of them i've met and uh, i am imagining that i if i put any one of these three people in front of my board members i don't think so they will be able to express themselves or to deliver you know they will be able to represent our company in, in a, the right way no no matter how much te technical expertise they have so the recruiter is like oh that means you are then he thought to himself then okay that means he is looking for somebody my employer is looking for somebody who is not only technical expertise but at the same time who is a good communicator as well so you see english language if having said so whether it is english language whether it is any language you need to have that confidence and your um, skills should be the one that you are able to deliver or to present yourself in front of people and there will be a continuous improvement there so uh, all those students who are entering into their academics life in their university life right now who want to improve their language skills uh i would suggest that just be focused give uh, give targets to yourself that okay within 6 months time at least i will be able from level 1 for example <clears throat> i want to move to level 2 set yourself targets nobody else is required to give you target you set yourself target okay and there are so many online trainings there i mean on youtube youtube and and i'm sure you guys know it very well <clears throat> all the students are well versed on that there are so many online trainings where you can equip yourself with so much of knowledge of such you know with, you, with such stuff reading writing speaking and all these things there's a plethora of material going on on the internet there we have audio books also you see i i have downloaded an an, an application which has books and then if you click on it it will read you for you. it will not only it will it will it has a text and at the same time if you click it will read you uh, read for you as well so you will not only be reading you will be listening as well <clears throat> so there is so much we can do there uh, if you really want to improve yourself yes so it depend on the how enthusiasm has uh, that in the student right <laughs> absolutely absolutely <laughs> yes uh, but uh, uh, so after reading then comes uh, first is reading right then comes writing skills yes yes but writing. Uh, writing. yes writing is important but sometimes the students get fear that uh, if we go wrong or in writing in grammar uh, grammatical part right so they get fear of uh, learning the new concept once or twice they get failure in that and uh, some uh, make jokes uh, some friends make joke of that right i know so, i know <laughs> yes <laughs> yeah, how to you. motivate them <laughs> how to motivate them see i'll tell you my own uh um uh, when i started uh, see i'm sure all of you who are uh, on linkedin who are well aware of <clears throat> the linkedin platform there was a time when linkedin was considered only as a as a as a platform which is which have our resume you know our digital resume that is it so and unfortunately uh, you know it's some people still consider it as a digital resume and nothing more than that however the more i you know a few years ago around 3 to 4 to 5 years ago i started you know i became more active on linkedin and then i started exploring what more can be done on linkedin see anyhow coming to uh, coming to the point of my writing uh, experience see um, when i started posting on linkedin okay i used to be like oh my god uh, uh, what 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 will i write what should i write 
what if i write this what if i post this and people are like make make fun of me they will say what you know how stupid you know this this is such a silly post all these things come in everybody's mind till today till today dear okay because whenever i'm posting something whenever i'm posting an article whenever i i, I have a this i have a this uh, newsletter uh, <clears throat> you know so weekly newsletter so uh, but the only fear you can overcome your fear when you have that faith and focus in yourself there you want to look good you want to improve yourself you if like for example i am not good in so and so skills so i want to improve right if i don't have that clarity and that focus and that commitment how will i go from this level to this level if i don't want to sound like for example if i have this fear that i don't want to look silly in front of my friends or in front of the audience when i will whenever i will speak i i have that fear that okay people will laugh at me okay and so again the same example will i stop talking will i start how how much i can escape from the situation i cannot right so you have to dive into it you have to take the leap of faith so what i did was i started posting small small you know one one sentences stuff easy easy ones i started uh, uh posting some quotation some picture something like that i i took baby steps and then gradually gradually i started writing one paragraph then you know something more something more now you know a year ago perhaps less than a year ago or maybe year ago i started my <clears throat> i've started publishing a newsletter on uh, linkedin when i started i was like who will lead my linkedin newsletter what will i write i don't have much connections you know what from 5 subscribers to from 5 it grew into 50 to 100 to 500 and you know what it is 25000 plus now and i'm like really my newsletter is 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 accessible or is i'm reaching out to 25000 more than 25000 subscribers at this point in time within less than a year people are reading my stuff so time will help you when you are consistent and committed so nothing to be fear of if people and people will come and make fun of you people will criticize you people will remark you and highlight your mistakes good let them highlight your mistakes take note of it if somebody doesn't see if i don't speak see right now i am giving this presentation it is being recorded i'm going to listen before anybody else watch it i will be the first one to watch it and i will i do it every time whenever i give presentations this virtual sessions and all these people uh, you know all these things at different forums as soon as it is i you know it finishes uh, recording if i have the recording with me i right away start listening to the whole session once again and my husband and my daughter and my people around me they say why are you you just spoke for an hour and you are listening to yourself again i said yes before any it reaches out to anybody else i need to hear myself so you have to have that commitment and to and that enthusiasm for yourself and fine no problem if you make a mistake it's not the end of the world right you will get better later again you will get the next time i have made i make i make mistakes every time whether anybody notices or not i know that i have made a mistake and it's okay because making mistakes and realizing and highlighting identifying your own mistake is an advantage is a benefit why because it it is a it is a sign that you can do better if i don't if i don't recognize my own mistakes i will be under the impression that oh my god i am doing the best i am perfect which means that i i will not improve the next time i don't have i will not be able to go higher okay so for all the audiences who are listening don't if you have that fear of writing or speaking don't worry you will you will get better with time with time yes and if you make a mistake then we should learn from it and do better absolutely. in the next session <laughs> absolutely absolutely yes that's true we are also uh, right now making mistakes and we are also learning at this point of time also right <laughs> 
Absolutely, absolutely. See, mistakes, 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 uh, mistakes are bound to happen, and especially when we are specifically talking about these communication skills, right? See, when I, when you are going for the, all the students who go for their presentations, who go for their interviews, oh, what is the percentage, or what is the probability that you come back from your session and you say, "Okay, okay, hundred and hundred percent, I did my best." Or I did perfect. No. Give your best, fair enough. But is there a is there a time that you say yeah, I ne I didn't make a single mistake uh, in your pronunciation, in your grammar, in your expressions, okay, uh, in your content? There are so many things, right? Sometimes uh, when you prepare your presentation, okay. And you deliver it. I'm talking about academic presentations in your college and universities. You prepare your presentation and you go and deliver it in the classroom. And you come back to your desk and you open your notes and you're like, oh my God, I missed saying this. Oh my God, I didn't say this. Or or you may you may feel that, well, I should have said it differently. It just didn't sound good. You realize it later on. Then no problem. See, life, this, this, our academic life, this our academic life, life, even for that matter, you know, you know, all the training all that the we undergo, we undergo, again, as the word as says, training, it is all a training session, okay? And, uh, and by, uh, you know, by now, by uh, now whatever experiences that I've had in my life, my life professional, life, career, academic, academic, whatever you call it, I feel that till the end, I will be, I will be under training. This opportunity that Perul University gave me, it is an uh, is it, this is a training for me. I will be listening to myself and I will be figuring out, oh my God, was I able to make any sense to the audience or not? And if I feel at any point, which I will definitely feel that okay, no, this would have been better. No problem. I'll have another chance. You have to have yes. that positivity in your mind here. Yes. We should be positive in life and move on ahead. <laughs> Absolutely. You remember, sorry, uh, uh, Charlie, I'll just tell you. Remember, I told if you guys were listening, I told you that earlier in my career, uh, you know, I was, despite whatever my recruiting uh, deliverables were, uh, you know, I was criticized. I was given warning for my interaction, for my communication. I was never, I never got a promotion. I never got appreciation, recognition. But that was now when I look now back, I, I laugh. I said, Oh my God, so what? I never got that. I, 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 I moved on. I, from those mistakes, from those experiences, I moved on. And I, in fact, that helped me to become better. Finish this better. position. <laughs> to explore different avenues. So that is it, dear. Yes. Yes. So, yes, ma'am, we have ended with the question Q&A session. And uh, sure. thank you so much, ma'am, for giving us your time, valuable time, and joining with us today. It will sure no help us, our students, as well as faculty, uh, for future mm -hmm. adventure. <laughs> sure, sure. Yes. Faculty, for faculty, I will say that uh, whenever they are, uh, obviously, I've never been into a teaching profession, so I don't find, I, I don't consider myself at all that uh, competitive enough or competent enough to, to say such a thing, but just from the perspective of communication, uh, the the professors or the lecturers who are giving uh, you know who are talking in the uh, in the class and they are giving their lectures, please make sure that your students are listening to you. And if they are not listening, so before you start scolding them or throwing your pen or a chalk on them, uh, <laughs> you know, self check that are you making an impact or not? Because if you are making yes. an impact, if you are building that connection and rapport, definitely then only they will listen to us. Yes, that's right. <laughs> Yes. Yes. Thank you so much, ma'am, for joining. And uh, I would like to thank the head of our department, Mr. Hemal Patel, sir, the HR of our institute, Professor Jatin Vedya, sir, and the uh, president of our university, Dr. Devanshu Patel, sir, for motivating and con uh, helping us to conduct this webinar. Thank you so much, ma'am, for joining with us. Thank you once again, the whole team of yours, for inviting me and yes. giving us this opportunity to have this talk. Yes, absolutely. Bye. Bye-bye, dear. Thank you. Thank you.